I'm showing on the screen uh, the eligibility to apply for express entry. There are many requirements. One of the requirements is to have skill work experience. As you see on the screen, you need one year of continuous work experience and you will be eligible. Uh, furthermore, to get the PR visa, you should also be admissible. That means you should not be inadmissible. And what is inadmissibility? Let's take a look. So I could have the best uh, possible express entry qualifications and background and points, but I can still be inadmissible to Canada and the visa can be denied. What are the, some of the reasons? There are many. Uh, security reasons, uh, human rights violation, committing a crime, organized crime, medical reason, financial reason, and one of the reasons is misrepresentation, uh, which means providing false information or withholding information directly related to decisions made under Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. So the reason I'm, I'm combining the requirement of express entry with the requirement of being uh, admissible is to show you a case uh, to show you what really happened in the case and express entry application was denied based on the misrepresentation done by the applicant. So let us jump to the case. So here's the case, Yusuf versus Canada, uh, 2019 FC, which is Federal Code 714, uh, listed in Canley. Canley is a website you can type on Google, canley.org. It will list uh, thousands of cases, uh, you know, related to different laws. And one of them is immigration, of course, that's my interest. So I am uh, reading this case. And if you want to read this case on your own, all you have to do is type, uh, you know, copy paste like this and put this on Google and you will be able to see it. Otherwise, this is also a link. Uh, you know, you can click the link and go from there. I'll, all right, so let's jump into the case. What ha really happened? This case uh, is posted for decision on May 21st, 2019. It's not very old. It's just uh, hardly five months. Mr. Sunday Tola Yusuf, as that's the name of the applicant, and versus Ministry of Citizenship uh, Immigration. So let's read a few lines, uh, and I'm reading the lines here, all right? So you can pause the video and then, you know, go from there. Mr. Sunday Tola Yusuf applied for PR as a skilled worker. The visa officer reviewed Mr. Yusuf's application, but concerned that Mr. Yusuf has failed to mention his involvement with a company called Fleet Partners. Now, the Fleet Partners website named Mr. Yusuf as his executive chairman. In addition, Mr. Yusuf's own LinkedIn profile mentioned that he was a member of Board of Fleet Partners. So here's the issue. Mr. Yusuf must have given his uh, experience uh, in, in his profile as whatever it is, but he failed to mention that he was also involved with Fleet Partners as a board member because it was listed also the visa officer find out that it was listed on the LinkedIn. So, of course, he was linked, uh, LinkedIn in, on that profile. But uh, Mr. Yu Yusuf forgot to mention this on his profile. So that means he hid information. So he was hiding some information. Why? Let's take a look. The officer brought these concerns to Mr. Yusuf's attention. Mr. Yusuf responded by explaining that he does not have official role in fleet partner, but he provides pro bono services to company. He provided an provide uh, affidavit from the company CEO and corporate document that did not identify him as a director. Nevertheless, the officer concluded that Mr. Yusuf was inadmissible to Canada. Remember what we were looking at, what is inadmissible? Uh, here it is. Um, because of misrepresentation, you are inadmissible. That's why you cannot get the visa. So uh, the visa officer decided that Mr. Yusuf was inadmissible for having made a material misrepresentation. Oh, my God. Okay. The officer found that Mr. Yusuf had not provided an adequate explanation for online information. So the point which I'm making is this, you, you may have a LinkedIn profile. You maybe have, uh, you know, listing some past experience or some other experience or part-time experience or something else but if you do not divulge all of if you do not di disclose all of this on your express entry profile you can be charged for misrepresentation and the express entry visa will be denied because of misre and this is what happened with this case so number four mr yusuf argues that the officer's conclusion was unreasonable blah 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 something and of course uh, they took this to the federal court and that's why, you know, the judge will give his his uh, rationale down below. We'll, we'll see. So there are two issues the judge is looking at. Did the officer reasonably conclude that, the, that Mr. Yusuf had misrepresented and did the officer provide 
adequate reason. So issue number one. So uh, I'm reading at number seven. I'm just going slow by slow, all right? So issue number seven. Uh, Mr. Yusuf says that the officer was unreasonably relied on third-party website, blah, 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 on which we have had no control to conclude there has been misrepresentation, okay? And the judge says, I disagree. The officer relied in part on the fact that Mr. Yusuf's own LinkedIn account cited his membership on the board of fleet partners. So Mr. Yusuf never provided an explanation for entry. On this evidence, the officer's conclusion that Mr. Yusuf had misrepresented his employment history was not unreasonable. So I also agree with this. Uh, the rationale is that your name was listed on a LinkedIn profile on which you mentioned that you were part of Fleet Partners as a board member, even though you never got any income or, you know, maybe it's free or pro bono. But still, your duty was to mention this in your experience, professional experience on Express Entry. You did not. So the visa officer was right and uh, the judge agrees. All right. So no, issue number two. Did the officer provide adequate reason? Mr. Yusuf maintains that any omission from his employment history could not have been material as the inclusion of additional information could only strengthen his application. No, I don't I don't agree with this logic. But anyway, he suggests that the officer failed to explain how his alleged omission could have induced an error in the administration of Ghana's immigration law. Okay, and let's see what the judge says. The judge says, again, I disagree. Mr. Yusuf, I'm just reading from here, uh, here. Mr. Yusuf applied for entry to Canada as a skilled worker. Obviously, his work history was central to his application. Any errors or omissions in the descriptions of his experience could have resulted in an error in the process of his application. In the circumstances, the officer's observation that Mr. Yusuf had not adequately explained the omission in his employment history provided a sufficient explanation for rejecting his application. So the judge obviously does not agree with the appeal reasons put forth by Mr. Yusuf. And what is the conclusion at this conclusion? On the evidence, the officer reasonably concluded and explained that Mr. Yusuf had failed to mention his employment and omission could have resulted, ta, ta, ta. Accordingly, I must dismiss this application for judicial review. That's it. So that means this review, judicial review was dismissed. No question of general importance stated. And the James O'Reilly judge, and this was, and of course they list you the clause for misrepresentation, section 40A. And uh, this is the case number. Uh, this is you can search on Google and by typing this if you want to this was heard in Toronto April 1st and it, it gives the name of the lawyers also who are representing and this is it so what do we learn from this let's go back what do we learn from this you have to disclose everything on your profile whether since is in LinkedIn or, or Facebook or anything if you have listed any fact that is material to the application you should disclose this in your express entry profile otherwise the result is in front of you they will they are likely to charge you for misrepresentation in this case uh, he was and the application was denied and the appeal did not survive so this is all what wanted to let you know uh, remember misrepresentation uh, is one of the reasons of being inadmissible there are many reasons uh, these are the reasons uh, out of them, misrepresentation is one of them. And in this case, because of this um, naive error of not disclosing his relationship with fleet partners on his LinkedIn profile, he was denied. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you like the analysis. Keep uh, the case handy for your own future express entry application or any application and share with other people to to understand why this is important and you know, you have to be very careful in disclosing complete information on your background. Thank you.